thank and I praise God for the opportunity to be here. I'll try to go a little slowly. Everybody said they could understand me until they heard me speak, right? <laughs> they were like, uh-oh. <laughs> Amen. 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 First of all, giving honor to God who is the head of my life. I am a child of God. I am saved. I'm going to add, I am sanctified. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And I do go after uh, infillings, meaning I have to seek God for more and more every day. Amen. To honor the pastor in his absence, Dr. Mazibuku. And Mike. Uh, to the pastoral team. All ministers. The leadership of the church. And you, to everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your sacrifice in coming to church this morning. Yes, yeah, so I'd also like to honor my pastor, Apostle Travis Jennings, Apostle Travis Jennings, and Pastor Stephanie Jennings, and Stephanie Jennings of the Harvest Tabernacle Church in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Amen. Amen. So, so you already have my bio. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I told you a little bit about me already. One thing I wanted to clarify is that I graduated in Rome, Georgia. <laughs> so sometimes when people hear Rome, they think it's Rome, Italy, right? Rome, Georgia. <laughs> little place. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm so happy to stand before you this morning to be entrusted <laughs> to talk about a message that's so near and dear to my heart. And that message is giving, seed sowing. Okay, I'm looking around. I hear you in the spirit. Again? Really? We, again? We have to hear this again. <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is yes. You get to hear this again because evidently there's a message that God wants to get to you. I believe that many have been convicted already and have been made conscious because we've had several messages over this last month about giving. So here I am, to help the Lord one more time. Yes. Amen. I'm a firm believer that you cannot be a giver unless you're first a tither. Why? Does anybody know why? 
going to tell you. Let's talk about tithing first. What is tithing? A tithe is a portion of your income giving as an offering to your local church. The word tithe literally means tenth in Hebrew. So that means your tithe is simply 10% of your income. So I will be using several scriptures, and some will not be in King James Version. I'll use uh, NIV, message, translation. I'll try to point them out, but sometimes I'll miss it. But I promise if you go and you search the scriptures, you'll find it. Amen. So the Bible explains that tithing is an important part of faith for those who follow God. And, there, and your tithe should be money that's set aside first. Malachi 3, starting with verse 8. I like to do this. Watch. Revelation. Starting with 6. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. You don't need to do it. Oh, okay. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Again, you cannot be a giver, a sower, a seed sower. That's what a giver is. Until you are first a tither. I'll give you an example. It's really simple. Say you loan money. Is it Lilligani? Lilligani? Or, or Ran? 100 to a sister, to you. Right, my sissy? I'll loan you a hundred. Yeah. And she forgets to pay me back. I don't know how people do, but they do. She forgets to pay me back. So we're in church, and we're having a good time. We're praising the Lord, and it's time for giving. giving. <laughs> And I'm a little animated, okay? I move a lot. And I see this sissy. She walks in, and I see her drop the money in the basket. Now, some of us might be offended. We may forget all about God. <laughs> when we see this sissy drop this money in the basket, why? The answer is because it wasn't her money to give. It was my money. <laughs> it was my money that she didn't pay me back. So is she a giver? 
No. So that's the example I want to use. How are we sowing seed or giving if we didn't first tithe and give God his money? Think about that. I come, I do 20, I do 100, but I didn't give God the 10%. All right, amen? Amen. I think as believers, we have to learn how to give. Giving is more than just money, but I will concentrate on money today, okay? We have to learn to give of our time our resources, our experiences, our love, our tithe, offerings, and gifts. Galatians 6, 7 lets us know that whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Luke, Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given unto you. A good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. Will be poured into your lap. Now this may sound a little different, okay? I know a lot of times we think, I have a need. I have a need. How can I give? I don't have enough. But I want to tell you that to keep focusing on your own need is really being selfish. It's really being selfish. Um, hear me out. There is an amazing world filled with interesting people such as, as yourself and me. I think I'm interesting. There are beautiful sights and sounds, smells, and tastes. All waiting for you to experience them and explore. If you spend all of your time concentrating on your lack or your pain, then you, you will miss all the beauty around you. Think about this. Instead of concentrating on your need, because we all have a need, be intentional about helping someone else. There are so many people in a worse state than you are. First Peter 5, 7. Cast all of your cares upon the Lord. So I'd like for you to join me in an exercise. This is an exercise on giving. So I need you to leave your comfort zone for a minute. Go to a homeless shelter. Or go, or go to a children's village. Go there and look around. Go and serve. I serve at a children's village who only eat meat once a week. If there's meat once a week. Now understand, rice and beans is better than nothing. But 
But everybody wants a little cuckoo, a little chicken every now and then, right? <laughs> I promise that if you do this, you will see things much clearer. Your problems will become minor. As a matter of fact, this exercise in giving it will cause you to see how very blessed you are. Amen. Amen. Listen, another thing. We can't always be physically present, so we can't all just go to a children's village or a hospital or a nursing home. And that's the reason that there are ministries and churches in place. Mm. Think about that. God is so strategic. We come here to get filled. But we're supposed to take it out to show his glory. Amen. Amen. So again, when we give financially, when we sow our seed, we are partnering, we are partnering with the mission of the ministry of the church. That means that we're extending beyond our own borders. Yeah. Beyond our own boundaries. Beyond our own houses and families. Amen. Amen. Also, when we give, especially when we give to the house of God, we're, we're financing the operations of the house programs and projects. Again, you may not be able to go to the hospital. Yeah, you may not be able to go to the children's village. And especially, you may not be able to get to rural areas. But your seed can get there. Amen. Amen. I think so often we're in church and we look around and we see lights. Right? Yeah, we hear music. We see cameras. The pastor's well dressed. Where's the need? Where's the need? There are so many things that go on behind the scenes. Does anyone know how much it costs for the lights to work in this building? Anybody know? You know how much yours are. You know how much your electric is. is yeah, it's very small compared to the church. Do you know how many people call the pastor for a need, a monetary need, every day? Have you ever thought of that? 90% of a pastor's phone calls are for an emergency. Yeah. 90% of a pastor's phone calls are for negative news. Can you imagine? To hear negative news all day, every day. And still must come and serve God's people and smile. Wow, that's a big, that's a big responsibility. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 19:17. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. That's good news. Amen. That's good because people may forget you. They forget to pay you back. <laughs> but God will never forget you. <laughs> Praise God. God will never forget you. Amen. Ecclesiastes 10 19. Money answers all things. 
Anybody ever wonder why would God put that in the why would the Lord allow that in the Bible? Money answers all things. Because it literally means that I don't have to search, I don't have to look, I don't have to wonder. If people come to my house, say if I have a housewarming or I have a wedding, and people go, oh, what would Kimberly like? You don't have to guess because whatever I like, money can buy it. <laughs> so if you give me money, I can buy whatever I like. <laughs> the same for you, right? Wouldn't you rather have money than an ugly blouse? It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. And so money does solve all things. Amen. Any need Amen. this church has, any no. need people have, money can solve that. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. So the Lord commanded the 10%. The 10% is holy. It belongs to God. But your giving, your seed sowing is based on your generosity. According to Genesis 26, 12 through 13, Isaac, excuse me, Isaac sowed seed and reaped a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. Amen. Isaka genae watanye la wavuna na lok pinza pinziwe. In order to reap a harvest, you must first sow something. You must give something. Let me give you an example. At my house, I have a garden. If I go out to the garden and I till the ground, but I don't drop a seed. I don't plant a seed. Should I stand and wait for maize to rise? Should I wait for spinach to grow? I think I'll wait a long time. And nothing will happen. That's the example. Meaning, we've tilled the ground with prayers and tears. We? We've cried, we've prayed, we've sang. But did we plant seed? Did we sow seed? This may sound insensitive. Tears don't move God. Ah. Tears don't move God. What moves God? Faith. Your faith moves God. Your seed sowing, it moves God. Uh, try crying over the, the, the soil, nothing. <laughs> plant a seed, plant a seed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So again, in order to reap a harvest, you must first plant or sow. And I believe you have to be intentional. Hmm, so, Sister Kimberly, hmm, it's been a while. I can't afford to tithe. I can't afford it yet. Hey, Sister Kimberly, it's got to it. I understand I understand your pain. As it was mentioned in my bio, I'm a divorced mother with three adult sons now. But when I was divorced, they were little. They weren't this big. They were like this, this big. And so when I divorced, in my case, I had a two-income household. 
I had a pretty good job and my, my husband had a better job. <laughs> and when he left, I felt it. It was challenging. Finances were very tight. How many know, and there's a lot of men in this room, boys eat a lot. Did you know? My sons, they ate so much. Yeah. Literally, I could serve them dinner and they would say, Mommy, that's a snack. Where is dinner? <laughs> you just had dinner. <laughs> But just to say, it took a lot of money to raise those three, those three sons. And I'll say, I'll honor my ex-husband, their father. He did take care of his children. It's not the same as being in the house. And single parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Amen. So how do you start tithing? How do you, if I never tithe, how, how do I start tithing? The first thing you do is pray. Right. So you're not praying about tithing. That's the word. Okay. You're praying for yourself. <laughs> Amen. What we're praying is, I believe that, I believe that tithing is more an issue of the heart than it is an issue of money. If you're struggling with the idea of tithing or giving, spend some time with God praying. Ask the Lord to give you the, the revelation and the wisdom of, of tithing. Ask him to give you the wisdom and revelation of giving, seed sowing. Even if giving doesn't come naturally, prayer can help soften our hearts and refocus our intentions. Amen. Amen. And then try this strategy. Our church has online giving. Right. So sometimes when you have to miss the service, you can still send your seed. Amen. You, can still, you can still honor God with your seed. For example, some Sundays I have to work or I have to travel. And sometimes I have to host visitors that come into country. And especially on burning Sundays when I can't make it, you may not see me. I know we're all together then. But the finance office will see my seed. Because I'll take my phone, it's quick, it's simple. And I make sure I add single parents on the memo. <laughs> Amen. 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 Single parents, y'all hear me? Everybody, can you hear me? So I know sometimes that's a little techy. That's a little more than everybody wants to do that whole phone thing, right? You want to do it? Okay. <laughs> but you can also still send your seed with a trusted sister or a brother. It can still make it. Okay. Okay, so try online. That's being intentional, making sure that I don't take God's money. 
Number three, very simple. Do a monthly budget. I hear people say, I don't have enough money for a budget. You're the main one that needs a budget. Because if you have so little money, then you need to allocate it wisely. Right? Everybody needs a budget. So the first line item on your budget should be what? Ties. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now the second line item on my budget is giving. So why, so why did I say my? Why didn't I say yours? Because honestly, when I first started sowing seed other than my tithe, I didn't have anything to sow. I could give my tithe, and there was nothing left after I paid bills. And so I would pray and cry, Lord, I want to honor you in giving. I know that only a seed is going to break the strong man of poverty off my life. And how do I know that? The word. Levi. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. If, if I sowed nothing, I could reap nothing. I didn't even have to be spiritual to know that. <laughs> that was just logic. That was just logic for me. So during prayer, God gave me a strategy. Yeah. He said, walk through your house. And all of the things you're not using in this house, put a price tag on them and sell it. And so the Lord gave me a strategy and I walked through the house I took those things my son brought their things and we put a price tag and we sold them and from that one sale we call it a yard sale in the U.S. Even if you don't have a yard, it's a yard sale. <laughs> so the yard sale. From just things in the house, I made 300 US dollars, which is about 5,700 Liligani Rand. Amen. Yeah, that's pretty good. And so I was able to not only tithe from that. I was able to give so a major seed. And then after I was able to give, I started seeing, I'm not going to say money fall from the sky. I saw opportunities. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I started to see opportunities. I started to get raises. I started to get promotions. And I started thinking, wow, this works. Yeah, this works. Let me keep doing it. Okay, Lord. So why do I add in my bio that I have a bachelor's degree at the age of 40? Because now you get a bachelor's degree at 23, right? 22, 23. Young. You're very young. Yeah. So I make sure that that's written in my bio to give people hope. 
so that you know that it's never too late. It's never too late to start over again. It's never too late to go back to school. It's never too late to start tithing. It's never too late to become a giver. And it'll change the trajectory of your life. I'll tell you how I know. So the minimum requirement for most positions was to have a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree. But the competition were all master's levels and PhDs. How could I compete with PhDs? I couldn't, but my seed could. Amen. 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 My seed opened door. The reason I'm standing here today in Eswatini is because a seed opened the door for me. Amen. 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 I was saying during the first encounter that I think we all have to come to the realization that life is not just about us. No one sneaks into the earth. Ah. No one sneaks into the earth. What does that mean? He knew you before you entered into your mother's womb. You came through your mother and father, but you came from God. And every person that God sends to this earth has an assignment. You have a purpose. It's up to you to discover it. Your purpose is waiting on you. And how do I discover it? Prayer, supplication. Sowing that seed. So that doors can open. If your hand is shut. Or you give sparingly. You'll reap sparingly. How many prayers do you have before the Lord? Think about it. Oh, I've been praying, praying. Nothing. How many seeds have you sown? Think about it. Or have you been tithing? Which is the first step. I am a seed sower. I believe in sowing seed. Because it works. And most of all, because I love the Lord. I was mentioning earlier that I support an orphanage. Hmm. Why? Do I have to? I'm not mandated. But what I know is that one, I have an assignment from the Lord. And he gives seed to the sower. He multiplies the seed that is sown as scripture. So that he can be glorified. He's being glorified in that work. The people who see the work. They, they get to glorify God. The children who reap the benefit from the work. Now there are 25 children who now glorify God. My life is not my own. It's not just about me. Your life is not just about you. I said earlier, you have an assignment in the earth. Some people have dreams that are so big. Eh, I'm going to go to sleep on it. It's too big. It's too big for you. 
It's not too big for God. He said to test them. Pray. And so. Pray. And so. And then there has to be action. I'm going to pray, I'm going to sow. And then I'm going to reap the harvest. Amen. Amen. There's so much I could say. But I'm going to end with this. Here's the principle. 2 Corinthians 9.10. I already said it. He gives seeds to the sower. Did you hear that? He gives seeds to the sower. And then he'll multiply your seed song. Who are the sowers? Those who make a decision to become a sower. Amen. So right now what I'd like to do, thank you so much. I want to offer everyone who has not been a tither to this day to repent before the Lord. Okay. Amen. I know a lot of times I repent at my seat. This is between me and God. But remember I said to you earlier that I realized that my life is not my own. The reason I tell so much about my life, the reason I tell my age. So I'm almost 58 years old. Praise so God. The reason I tell all of that information is to give people hope. The reason I'll repent openly at an altar is so that people like me can know that they can do it too. Yeah. The reason I tell you I finished a degree at 40 is so that you know it's never too late. If I hadn't started college, which I actually went to four colleges over many years, but if I had been embarrassed to sit in a classroom with really young people, <laughs> yeah, if I had been embarrassed that I didn't do it earlier, then I wouldn't be standing here today in this country. Almost 20 years later from when I got my degree. For me, my life really started at 40. So I want to offer everybody again, as I said, I'm transparent because I know that it can change somebody's life. If you know you're not a tither, and you're ready to make a decision to become a tither, remove that curse and walk in the blessings of God. Meet me at the altar. Meet me at the altar. Amen. Amen. And I said to single parents before. Uh, I'm always kind of like vexed when it comes to the altar. You don't know what that means, vexed? Do you know what that word means? Upset, unhappy. Yes. Yeah. Here's a big altar before God, and most people won't come because they're embarrassed. But your healing and your deliverance is here at this altar. Your change. Yeah, the change in your life is here at this altar. Amen. So please join me at the altar. If you're ready to repent. We thank you. We thank you for the word of the Lord that has been sown into the ears of the hearers. Father, we thank you for our hearts being made conscious of this mandate in the earth. 
Father, most of all, we thank you, Lord, for our faith growing from this day forward. Father, what I used to be yesterday, I am not today. I thank you, Lord, that today we repent and we are tithers. I thank you that today we repent and we are seed sowers. And Father, as we stand before you unashamed, uh, willing to be an example to people who need faith, Lord, bless, Lord, heal, deliver. I thank you for employment opportunities. Father, I thank you for the person who has lost their encouragement. They've been looking for a job for, I hear, two years. Who's been looking for a job for two years? Stand up. Point your hand over there. Father, we thank you that you are opening doors of employment. I thank you for this young lady that raised her hand, Lord. I thank you, Lord, even as she has repented. Father, if I had a seed, I'd sow it. I thank you, Lord, because her heart is pure before you that a door will open. We touch and agree. We call it in. We call in, we call in opportunities. We call in a job. We call in finances. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that even when she receives this job, she's going to be a tither. She's going to be a sower. She's going to be an example to the kingdom. Are you married, baby? Are you married? How old are you? You're 28. You finished college. You have finished college. What's your degree in? Public health. There are programs. There are programs in public health. I know of some. Amen. So the Lord pointed you out. See me after church, okay? Amen. Father, I thank you. Again, I praise you for open doors, for opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for sending one, someone to use their power, their influence, and their ability to help me. Thank you, Lord, for do donors in this earth, for every project I can dream of or think of that you've given me, Father. You've already laid the foundation. You've already sent the money. You've already touched the heart of the millionaires because that's what my seed can do. It can touch the heart of a millionaire. Father, it only takes one person to take care of every one of our needs. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify you, we glorify you. And we all agree, we touch and agree, it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.